my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, the past one week has been somewhat disturbing for Muslim communities across America. Since the travel ban was announced last Friday, Muslim communities are, fi are feeling a sense of anxiety, a level of uncertainty. And Allah Azza wa Jal has said in His Quran, We who believe in the unseen, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ and believe in the Akhirah, وَبِلْ آخِرَتِهُمْ يُقِنُونَ What will happen? وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ حَتَّى نَعْلَمَ الْمُجَاهِدِينَ مِنْكُمْ وَالصَّابِرِينَ وَنَبْلُوَ وَأَخْبَارَكُمْ That we will test you. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ We will surely, without a speck of doubt, وَلَا The La is for emphasis. نُون مُشَدَّدْ at the end is also for emphasis. That without any doubt, we will surely test you. Hatta na'lam, till we know. Allah knows. His ilm is kamil, his ilm is muhit, ilm al ghaib. Till we come to know, till it becomes evidence, evident to us, till he shows us. Na'lam al mujahideen. Who amongst you? Na'lam al mujahideen. Minkum. Who amongst you are those who strive in the cause of Allah? Wasabirin. And who amongst you are patient? Wanabuluwa akhbarakum. And we will test your assertions. What you used to assert. What you, when you said you were Muslim. When you said you believe in the unseen. When you said you believe in wahi and you believe in the Akhirah, then Allah Azza wa Jal will test you. Nablu wa akhbarakum. So this time, we can, it is surely a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are some benefits for Allah to put us through this test. There is a purpose. We'll come to that in a few minutes. But first, I would like to emphasize our belief in Qadr, Taqdeer. Amantu, we were taught as children, after we, we were taught the Shahada, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa Ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah, we were taught Iman mufassal, Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawm al akhir wal qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allah ta'ala wal ba'thi ba'd al maut these are the seven articles of faith seven tenets of faith that every child learns at least in the subcontinent of India Pakistan when he's 4 years old amantu billah that i believe in Allah wa malaikatihi and his angels Wa kutubihi and his books, his scriptures. Wa rusulihi and his messengers. Wa yawm al akhir and the sa'ah, the end of time, when Allah will destroy kullu man alayha faan. Wa qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allah ta'ala. And qadr, taqdeer, what is meant to be the good and the bad. Khayrihi wa sharrihi. Min Allah Ta'ala is from Allah. Wal ba'thi ba'd al mawt and we believe in the day of resurrection, rising from our graves, shaking dirt from our hair, and being answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever is meant to happen, and a lot will happen. Hold you can't hold your breath for four years, but this is just two weeks into the presidency. We have another four years, so you can only imagine what will happen. And it's not so bad for, the, for us here. You can imagine what's going to happen in Muslim countries. But it is our belief, mentioned in Surah Yasin, 
regarding qadr and taqdeer kullu shay'in ahsaynahu fi kitabim mubin that everything has been written and decreed to happen in the book in the kitab mubin what is kitab mubin mentioned a few times in the quran in a hadith nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained that 15 50000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth allah azza wa jal or created the pen and told the pen uktub write and the pen said what should i write and then allah azza wa jal replied write ma huwa kainun ila yawm al qiyamah write all that is to happen till the day of judgment that's why the, in an incident in the, comes in the story of isra and miraj when adam alayhi salam was was told by another nabi of allah that you ate the fruit of the tree and we had to come to earth adam alayhi salam replied why are you blaming me for something that allah had written 50000 years before the world was created everything is in the book kitab mubin to the point when we are going to be born where we are going to be born what career we are going to have who we are going to get married to how many children we are going to have divorced or not when we will die everything is written in what we will eat who our friends will be where we will buy the house everything is written in the kitab e mubin and in a hadith nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained that ma asabak lam yakun li ukhtiyak what was meant to come to you what was meant to reach you the good the benefit it was not going to miss you a person has one foot out the his front door he's about to close the front door and the phone rings he turns around picks up the phone and he receives the good news that he has a job and he can start tomorrow and he thinks if i left the house one minute sooner i would have missed the job i would have no no ma asabak lam yakun li ukhtiyak the good that was come to you was never to miss you وَمَا أَخْطَأَكْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُصِيبَكْ And what missed you was never meant to come to you. Person thinks the car in front of him had an accident. And he thinks if I, I could have been that car. No, you could not have been, been that car. You think if I left my house 10 seconds sooner, I could have been that car that got smashed to pieces. No because Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ma akhtak what missed you was never meant to come to you So we as believers in the unseen in the akhirah have belief in taqdeer in qadr And on that note let me explain qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi the good and the bad the sweet and the bitter is according to the human perspective otherwise anything that comes from allah is good let me give you a very basic example if a child is put to bed at 9 pm for the child this is bad but parents are taking away his freedom he wants to enjoy he wants to play video games he wants to stay up he does not want to be put to bed this is nothing but sharr from a child's perspective from a parent's perspective this is nothing but khair nothing but khair why because he'll be refreshed he'll be able to pay attention in school the next day if he doesn't get his sleep then he there's chances he'll get sick so from a parent's perspective putting the child to bed is nothing but khair so khair and sharr khairihi wa sharrihi is from the human being's perspective otherwise all that is to come to us is for our own good we don't realize it at that time we don't realize it and we become upset and angry and emotional why me why did this happen to me 
But once a person realizes that it's from Allah Azza wa Jal, then he should be content. A person whose bond was very strong with Allah, and he had an import-export business, goods were coming in and out. He received news, someone came and told him that the ship that, carried was, that was carrying your merchandise, it drowned, and all the goods, your investment has been lost. He looked down. After a few moments, he lifted his head and said, Alhamdulillah. Then a few hours later, that same person came and said, that was a rumor, that was not true. Your ship carrying your goods and merchandise is safe and sound, and it's going to reach shore any minute. He looked down, then lifted his head and said, Alhamdulillah. The person said, I understood why you said Alhamdulillah the second time, but I haven't understood why you said Alhamdulillah the first time. He said, when I looked at my heart the first time, I felt that it was calm and it was content and it was not complaining. And my belief in taqdeer and qadr was strong. So I said, Alhamdulillah. Second time, when I looked at my heart, it was the same. Content with whatever Allah has written for me. So I said, Alhamdulillah. So Muslims are those who say, Alhamdulillah. Hamadun. Those who praise Allah in abundance. This is one of the sifat, one of the attributes that this ummah has been described with in previous books in the Torah. That this ummah will be an ummah of hamadun, those who praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. But now coming back to the point. Okay, our belief in qadr is strong. But why the test? Why are we going through this difficulty, this adversity. Adversity is not an obstacle. Adversity is not a roadblock. Adversity is an opportunity. Adversity is an opportunity. There are people, a person I heard with my own ears, was sentenced to prison for a crime he did not commit. DNA evidence proved him innocent, exonerated him. He came out of prison, innocent person, and he said, that was the best thing that happened to me. Can you believe it? A woman, Annie Mullins, born with a handicap, Doctors told her parents, your daughter will never walk again. She says, at the age of five, if I was asked, would you trade your childhood? Because she had to go through intensive therapy and surgeries. Would you trade your childhood with any other child, normal child? She would say yes. But now at age 35, she's saying, I would not trade my life of experiences with any other person. Why? Because adversity shapes a person. It makes him stronger. It makes us who we are. It brings us closer to Allah. It takes us to the next level. What Allah wants to give us, we are not ready to receive it unless we overcome the adversity, the opportunity of adversity. So adversity is an opportunity. Second reason why the test from Allah. Because this test, this adversity will bring out the best in us, will make us work harder. This has been proven. A person who picks up the phone call and the voice from the other side is clear perfectly crystal clear sound coming from the other side of the phone. He won't pay much attention to the conversation. But if there's a little bit of static, 
in the voice this has been statistically proven by scientists social scientists that if there's a little bit of static in the voice and the voice is being disrupted then the person will pay more attention to what is being said this static on the line is called stressor it's called stressors little bit of stress is good now if the voice quality is so bad is so bad that you can't barely hear a word then you will get frustrated and put the phone down so too much stressor having too many stressors is not good but a little bit of stressor is good for the human being because that's how we flourish household income household income if it's below 35000 that can that's not too good in the sense of i'm talking statistically statistically speaking that that's a disadvantage for children they might not have the same educational opportunities as households with higher levels of income 35 to 75000 Household incomes between 35 and 75,000. This is a stressor, a good amount of stress. The children will flourish and excel academically. Household incomes over 75,000 is a disadvantage. It's a disadvantage for the children. Statistically, it has been proven that household, where the income is over 75,000 a year, the children do worst. Why? Because everything is being served to them on a silver platter. They don't have to work for it. Everything is coming easy. So that stressor between 35,000 and 75,000 is good for the children. They will flourish. They will, do it. They will excel. We got complacent. A little bit of stress is good for us. Now we know the importance of voting. Now we know the importance of having a good relationship with your congressman or congresswoman. Now we realize the importance of picking up the phone and calling your senator. Now we realize the importance of of reaching out to other communities, to non-Muslims, and forming alliances with like-minded people. This level of stress is good for the Muslim community. It serves as a wake-up call, because as everything is going fine and dandy, we become complacent. A little bit of stress brings, makes us active. And we don't take being Muslim for granted. Oh. These are the benefits of being tested by Allah and the benefits of adversity. And the third and last point, there's more, but I will stop, is that we don't know the bigger picture. Allah Azza wa Jal has the full picture in front of him. He has zaman and makan in front of him, time and place. Let me explain. If you are in Sandy, you can't see West Valley City, can you? But if you are at a higher elevation or in a helicopter, you, now you can see both Sandy and you can see West Valley. You have both in front of you. For Allah, there is no past, present, or future. Allah, for him, past and future is one and the same. He sees both equally. He sees both equally. He has the whole picture in front of him. We don't have the whole picture in front of us. We don't know what's in store for us. So we think maybe this is not good for us, but maybe it is. What do we know? Now you have 
Anglo-Saxon, Caucasian Christians holding up signs at the airport saying, we are all Muslims. That's a change for the better. There was a time when people, a majority of the people of this country, when Muhammad Ali, the boxer, announced for the first time that he was a Muslim, majority of the people had never even heard the word Muslim or Islam in America. Now, people are learning about Islam. People are coming to know Islam. And they are standing up to defend Muslims. Before this travel ban, if, if my flight was from gate C3, forget about praying anywhere near gate C3 because I have to board from that gate. I would not even pray by gate C12. I would go to a different terminal and pray by gate A4. And now you have crowds of people praying at the airport, Muslims protesting, crowds of Muslims praying at the airport, and non-Muslims are cheering them on. So we don't see the bigger picture. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees one and all. He sees the future. He knows what the future holds. As Muslims, we are optimistic. We are not pessimistic. We are optimistic and we say, Alhamdulillah, things will turn for the better. Because Islam needs new blood. If you look at the history of Islam for the last 1400 years, we need new blood. Salahuddin Ayyubi, he was a Kurdish. The Muslim dynasty that, that ruled India the Mughal dynasty, they came from Afghanistan and they were the descendants of the Mongols uh, who invaded the Islamic Empire. The Turks, Ottoman Turks, that ruled the Muslim world for 400 years, they were the descendants of the, Mon of the Mongolians. So Islam has survived and thrived on new blood, on new communities and nations accepting Islam and taking the banner of Islam further. Why? Because no one nation, no one community, no one ethnicity has a monopoly on Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used different nations and different ethnicities and different communities to serve Islam. Who knows? Who knows that maybe one day they, this nation will accept Islam. And this is the true victory of Islam. Not on the battlefield. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ Surah Al-Nasr Many of us have memorized Surah Al-Nasr. When the help of Allah and victory comes then how does Allah describe victory? What's the next ayat? Next ayat is a description of fath, victory. And you see people entering in the fold of Islam in crowds, in droves. So the victory of Islam is not on the battlefield necessarily. It's winning the hearts and minds of people. And that's how Allah describes fath in the Quran. Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. We have given you a clear and open victory. There was no military victory or conquest. Hmm? Makkah was taken without a drop of blood. What was the victory? People accepting Islam, coming into the fold of Islam. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us perseverance and make us steadfast. Changing our name from Muhammad to Mo is not going to help us. Being good and strong Muslims, praying to Allah, strengthening our bond, being active in the community, not taking Islam for granted, being involved with our non-Muslim neighbors and friends and organizations 
is what is going to help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. May Allah give us the ability to practice what has been said and heard. Wa akhru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa ma alayna illa al-balaq.